guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com, bringing you my review plus on feet video of the Nike Mercurial Superfly 4 in the latest Metal Flash Pack colorway. Now inside the box, they do include a string bag to go along with the shoes themselves. The string bag is black in color with black strings. On the one side, you're going to find a bright mango Nike swoosh. And on the opposite side, you're going to find the bright mango Nike football branding. Other than that, all you're going to find inside the box, as you guys can see, are the shoes themselves. So we'll get these guys out of the box really quickly and we'll take a closer look at the return of a bright mango mercurial in the form of the metal flash pack Superfly 4. So bright mango colorway that we have seen in the past from Nike, most notably the launch colorway of the Nike Mercurial Vapor 8. And like I said, it's making its return here on the latest pack from Nike. And it looks really, really good on the Superfly 4. So in today's video, we are of course going to take a closer detailed look at the colorway itself. We're gonna talk tech specs, performance details, as well as take a look at how these things fit and feel on feet. So if you're interested in learning more about the Metal Flash Pack Superfly 4, please stick around and watch the entire video. If you guys are interested in a pair of these for yourself, be sure to check out the first link down below in the description. That's gonna take you to the review page on my website, where you'll find Buy It Now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes, where you'll be able to pick these guys up below their normal $275 retail price. So again, if you're interested in a pair first link down below go ahead and check it out and with that being said let's get right into the review to start things off let's take a closer look at the colorway now bright mango like i mentioned at the start of the video is something that we've seen before from nike and it's one of those colors that's kind of difficult to make out in terms of whether or not it's pink or it's orange it's kind of more of a salmon color kind of an in-between uh, but I actually grabbed some previous colorways of the Superfly 4 that perhaps you're a little bit more familiar with just to do kind of a side-by-side -side comparison. So I've got the Hyper Pink, the Launch colorway, which is Hyper Punch, and then I got the Laser Orange ones right here, just so you can see a side-by-side -side comparison with the Bright Mango colorway. So I would say that it's kind of like an orangish pink color in person. You can see next to Laser Orange, uh, it's significantly different. They really don't compare whatsoever. So we'll get those out of the way. Next to Hyper Punch, I would say that's probably the closest color to what you're gonna find here with the Bright Mango. The Hyper Punch looks a little bit more red than it does orange, where this definitely does look like a slightly lighter shade of orange. But again, if you're comparing it to anything, I would say it's definitely closest to the launch colorway, which was Hyper Punch. And then next to the Hyper Pink colorway that I have right here, you can see when you put it next to a very vibrant pink, it definitely ends up looking more orange than it does pink. So like I said, it's kind of like an orangish pink color, really, really unique and very similar to what we've seen in the past from the Nike Mercurial Vapor 8 in bright mango. So you actually have bright mango for the actual exposed parts that are made from Flynet. Same thing goes for the laces. And then you have a matte finish, solid layer of Nike skin over top. So you don't actually get to see um, the bright mango uh, Flynet knitting material underneath that Nike skin layer. So keep that in mind. Um, the Nike swoosh, as you guys can see, is metallic silver. It has a nice kind of reflective, not necessarily reflective, but it's shiny, um, almost like a coin. Uh, finish on the swoosh with a black outline. You have that on both the front and back of the shoe. That's the same kind of Nike swoosh with the black outline that you're going to find across this entire pack. Uh, you're going to find an accent color of hyper turquoise, which is in the tips of the studs, as well as the Nike swoosh on the bottom, carbon fiber sole plate, as you guys can see. The inside of the collar is also hyper turquoise, which is a really cool kind of accent color, and the mid layer on the collar. So, right here, when it stretches out, it reveals some of that hyper turquoise. Same thing goes across the top of the foot, which you'll be able to see a little bit more clearly during the on feet portion of the video. So that's pretty much it as far as the colorway itself is concerned. Let me know your thoughts on it down below in the comment section. Do you like how these look? Why or why not? And with that being said, let's move on to the tech specs so we can learn a little bit more about the overall performance. As far as performance is concerned, the Superfly 4 is a very well proven shoe at this point. Now, if you guys are interested in more info, you can check out the detailed review on my website a written review that'll be the very first link down below in the description and I also leave annotations on screen to my playtest as well as traction test videos of the super 
Superfly 4 if you want to see them in action. So why would you buy the Superfly 4? Two main reasons are attracting people to these, in my opinion. It's the Flyknit Upper and the mid-cut design. Now, the Flyknit Upper is definitely on the thinner side. Out of all the knitted shoes out there right now, this one is definitely the thinnest. Um, does it provide a barefoot feel? Yes, but at the same time, because of the knitted material itself, just the nature of it, it does have a slightly padded sensation, so it's not a true barefoot feel, more like what you're going to get from something like a Mercurial Vapor 10, which really has no extra padding to it whatsoever. But still, if you're looking for a super thin uh, feel on the ball, you're definitely going to get that from the Superfly 4. That's what it's supposed to offer. Now, as far as structure is concerned, despite the material itself being very thin, very soft, very flexible, almost sock-like, especially once broken in, it's very, very well structured, very well supported, supported, and the shoe itself just has a much more responsive feel than you might expect, given the softness of the upper itself. And there's two reasons for that. The first reason is the internal support cage that I can't actually show you because I can't open the shoe up, but it is in fact there. And the second reason, or the second structure element I should say, are the Brio cables that run from the base of the sole into the lacing system on both sides of the shoe. So when you pull those laces tight, it pulls on the Brio cables, it pulls on that internal structure and locks your foot in place inside of the shoe. Like I said, making for a surprisingly responsive feel, but also still maintaining a very sock-like kind of flexible sensation because of this knitted upper. A lot of people have been asking me whether or not the laces are a necessary element to actually wear with these shoes, mainly because of the release of the Adidas A16 Plus Pure Control. And the simple answer to that question is yes, the laces are 100% required if you want to get optimal performance out of this shoe. The laces make all of the incorporated structure systems actually work. If you eliminate the laces, you lose all of that structure, you lose all of that responsiveness, you lose all of that lockdown. The laces aren't here just for the sake of being here. They actually serve a vital purpose or a, a vital part in the actual performance of this shoe. So like I said, if you're planning on buying any of the mid-cut models from Nike, use the laces. They're there for a reason. Um, the, t the actual uh, main part of the upper is covered in Nike skin, so it's not left completely slick. It doesn't really have a grippy feel on the ball, but it's just so, like I said, it's not slippery on the ball. And you also will find ACC all conditions control as a feature as well, acting as kind of a wet control element. Not a major feature, but it is something you will find on all the top end models from Nike. Uh, going towards the back of the shoe, you have an internal heel counter here. Of course, it does have a mid-cut design, so the collar itself, as well as the middle part, um, where a tongue would normally be located, that is elasticated. There's no structure here. It's very soft. It's very, very flexible. It doesn't provide any uh, extra support, um, which is a big misconception with the mid-cut models from Nike. There's no real protection to be had from this either. It's just kind of just a single layer of extra material, I suppose. Uh, but like I said, the main reason why this is there is not necessarily as a performance benefit, it's just to change the feel of the shoe. It gives the shoe a different fit in the heel, which we'll talk about later in the video, but also makes the shoe feel like it's flowing from your uh, kind of leg onto your foot, as opposed to something that's just strapped to your foot. Is it a make or break feature? Uh, yes and no. I, I mean, nothing really feels like the mid-cut models from Nike at the moment, um, but is it something that, like I said, offers a tangible performance benefit? The simple answer to that question is no. There's no benefit to a mid-cut or low-cut shoe of any kind. Inside the shoe, you will find an internal heel, uh, heel liner that is... Uh, basically a smooth synthetic leather, not a lot of padding, but just enough to allow for a comfortable enough fit. I'll give you guys a quick look at the insole because it is fully removable. The insole is perforated, as you guys can see, mesh liner on top, and it's just a single layer of this foam. Uh, again, nothing too crazy, but it does get the job done. And then, of course, the sole plate, carbon fiber, really, really cool looking, performs the part as well. On the thinner side, nice and flexible too, but real, really no issues with stud pressure if you're playing on firm natural grass. And then, of course, you get the mercurial stud pattern, all bladed studs, very, very aggressive multi-directional traction. If you've used the mercurial stud pattern in the past, you're going to like this one just as much. Um, they always seem to work really, really well. And again, if you're just looking for aggressive traction in general, you can never go wrong with the Mercurial line. So overall, very, very attractive shoe um, when it comes to the performance kind of, uh, I guess, the the feeling that it has on offer. Nothing feels quite like a Superfly 4 at the moment. So if everything I s said sounds good to you, then this is one of those shoes that you most likely will enjoy quite a bit. As far as weight is concerned, the Superfly 4 is a pretty lightweight shoe, both in hand as well as on feet. 
So I'm gonna weigh this pair for you today in real time just so we can see the exact weight in this video. Uh, keep in mind this is a brand new pair in a size nine US. We're gonna throw them on the scale and you can see that they weigh in at 6.9 ounces which is slightly lighter than average for the same size Superfly and other colorways that I've personally brought in. Uh, for those that are wondering what that is in grams, that's the equivalent of 196 grams. Why are these slightly lighter than other colorways that I've brought in? I don't really have an answer to that question. They haven't changed anything physically with the shoe. Uh, I would imagine that the difference of 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 ounces, which is very, very small, by the way, not an amount of weight that you're gonna notice either in hand or on feet. These don't feel lighter than other colorways of the Superfly. Uh, but as you guys can see by the scale, they are technically a little bit lighter. I would think that it has to do with some kind of manufacturing variance. Um, just from one pair to another. I would bet that if I weighed 10 pairs of Superfly 4s in this exact colorway, some of them wouldn't be the exact same weight. It, it's just how things go. They can't make every single pair absolutely identical. There's always gonna be some kind of variation, whether it's glue or just excess material in general. So the pair that I'm weighing right here is technically a little bit lighter. Does that mean every single pair will be? Not necessarily, but uh, at the end of the day, if you're looking for a lightweight shoe, you're definitely gonna get that sensation from the Superfly 4. Is it the lightest shoe money can buy? No, but they're definitely light enough to give you a very kind of, not necessarily weightless, but very natural experience when you're wearing the shoe. The weight is never going to be something to complain about with the Superfly 4. All right, so here is a look at the Superfly 4s on feet. On my left foot, I have the stock laces that come with the shoes. And on my right foot, I have a pair of metallic silver reflective SR4U replacement laces. If you're interested in a pair of replacement laces for yourself, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. Find a direct link to that website down below in the description of this video. Now in terms of how these things fit and feel on feet, Superfly 4 definitely has a very unique feel overall. It's a tighter fitting shoe, which is what you would expect from the Mercurial line, but it doesn't really compare to anything else in the Mercurial line, present or past. It really does, like I said, have its own kind of unique feel to it. The fly net upper is thin and very, very flexible, especially in the toe box and forefoot area. There is some stiffness from the reinforcement internally, as well as the Brio cables when you pull the laces tight, but that's something that just kind of takes some getting used to. It, it doesn't feel overly stiff at first, the biggest thing with all the mid-cut models from Nike that you're going to notice immediately is the heel. It is stiffer. It does have a different fit than a standard low-cut shoe. And it takes some getting used to. As long as you break things in slowly, take your time, don't wear them straight into a game or straight into a free kick session, you shouldn't really have any issues with discomfort. And you should be able to break them in properly, like I said, without too many problems. As far as width is concerned, it is a tighter fitting shoe, which is... Is a, it's a mercurial, so that's kind of expected. And uh, the flying upper with the Brio cables isn't going to stretch either. So the way these things fit from right out of the box is the way they're gonna fit for their entire lifespan. So if they don't fit you properly from the get-go, they're not going to stretch out. The way they fit from out of the box is the way that they will stay. And as far as sizing is concerned, I'm wearing my usual size nine US here, and the fit and length is absolutely perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair of these for yourself, I would strongly recommend going true to size in order to achieve the best possible fit. All right, guys, that is it for my review of the Bright Mango Metal Flash Pack Nike Mercurial Superfly 4. If you guys are interested in more info, be sure to check out the review page on my website. That'll be the very first link down below in the description of this video. On that page, you'll find a detailed written review. You'll find high quality images of this exact pair that I took myself, as well as buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes, where you'll be able to pick these guys up below their normal $275 retail price. So again, if you're interested in a pair, first link down below, go ahead and check it out. If you have any questions at all regarding the Superfly 4, leave them down below in the comments and I definitely will get an answer out to you. If you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked in the description as well. Other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, thanks for watching.